Hello and welcome back. It's puzzle time with Sudoku Sleuth, and today we're playing Golden Ratio. So whenever you sort of come across Golden Ratio, surely you think about, I don't know, paintings, nature. So this is kind of what we have in here, is essentially Sleuth taking a, a still life painting class, clearly ignoring all the fruits that are on display everywhere that all the other students are currently busy painting and instead focusing on painting a bunch of different ratios, sort of spirals, within spirals, within spirals, all obeying that golden ratio rule set. Now, it's not gonna surprise you that when you take a look at today's grid and the puzzle, that it's full of golden lines, uh, Nabner lines. So let's take a look at today's puzzle. I'm, I've been really enjoying these slightly simpler puzzles where it's all about really shining the light on one variant. Now, that's not entirely true in today in that it has two variants, but I can clearly see it's very much about the Nabner lions, not necessarily the black crop kidots. But anyway, quickly, rule sets are normal Sudoku rules apply. That means place the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. Now the Nabner lines. No two digits on a golden line can be consecutive, regardless of their order along the line. So, for example, if I place a 5 on this line, I cannot place anywhere on the rest of this line 4 or 6. doesn't matter that they're not adjacent. Um, as long as they're anywhere on there and there are any two digits that are consecutive, that will break this rule set. Excuse me. Then we have digits separated by a black dot must be in a 1 to 2 ratio. We've got many of them throughout the puzzle. So, for example, if this cell here was a 2, this would have to be 1 or 4 to be in a 2 to 1 ratio. It's also very clearly stating not all dots are given. So that 2 has no issues with being next to another 4 in here. That doesn't require a black dot between these two cells. So, that's all the rules for Golden Ratio by Jobo. So if you want to join Sleuth in this painting class, draw a whole bunch of golden ratio still life images, link will be in the description down below for you to play along as usual. And uh, with that said, I'm going to restart the clock and see how I get on. Um, let me just, yeah. Sorry, I've, I'm trying to keep tabs of where all the chapters are and I'm doing a, quite a terrible job of it, right. Now, when I look at this, I can't help but think this is a puzzle that's about parity. And the reason I'm thinking that is I'm noticing that these Nabner lines, with the odd exception, I say the odd exception is literally only one exception, are made up of unique digits. All the lines are either in the same row or the same box. And yeah, that is, this is the only exception on the grid. Now, the reason I think this is significant is if you think about this five cell, and, and there are so many of them on the puzzle, you know, this is five cells, this is five cells, this is another five cells, um, this is another five cells. And the important thing is all of these, this is another five cells, have to be unique because they're all either in the same box or in the same row. Now, I'm going to say all of these have to be odd. And I'll explain why. If I try and place a single even digit on here, let's say, let's go with a two. So I can't place one, two, three, anywhere else on this Rembrandt. Sorry, Nabner. Now let's see if I can actually make this work at all. So the next possible digit would be four, that removes the five. The next possible digit would be six, that removes the seven. Next possible digit would be eight, and I cannot place a nine. So even a single even digit on these, because it excludes itself and two of the other digits around it, it's just like on a number line. Um, I need to pick these digits just because of the way they interleave, so that I'm spreading myself as far apart as possible to be able to say that none of them are consecutive. So, if we assume that this is indeed 
a parity puzzle. Let's see what else I can now color as even. And hopefully there's a decent chunk. Four evens in column three. That means all of these now have to be odd. Five odds in row one. All of these have to be even. There's only three evens, so not quite enough to be able to do anything about the rest. We can, of course, start to use the black Kropke dot, and we've done this recently in one of the oil and water puzzles with Kropke. If you have an odd digit on a black Kropke dot, the other one absolutely has to be even. Just as the nature of it, if you're taking any number and multiplying it by two, the second one has to be even. Now that's helpful in the context of box three because it places all the even digits and therefore all of the odd digits are these. We've got five in here, that's four even digits. Uh, that clearly has to be even. I sort of missed that one when I was seeing that's odd. That's clearly got to be even. And then I'm not too sure. Can I take this any further? Kind of, yeah. Five odds in column seven. That means all of these have to be even. That's four evens now in box six. All of these have to be odd. That's, yeah, five odds in column nine. That's even, in fact, the rest of this box is even. I should have, I don't know why I missed that from the beginning. I've already got five odds. Sorry, I probably should have restart my browser. It's behaving a little bit erratically, so apologies. My selections are, it's almost like as I select the cells, it's sort of laggy and doesn't quite select them all. Um, where to go next? I'm not sure I'm able to color anymore. having a look around there's a lot of them that are under pressure you know that row seven for example that's four odds column one that's four odds column four that's four odds and column six that's three evens but it's just not enough for me to place any more right now right row nine that's four evens these are all odd again just piling on the pressure four odds in box seven that means there is only one more of them and in fact five odds in column one means all of these are even now four evens in box four that means this is odd we need two more evens in here one even one odd kind of thinking I mean, it's not normally the way I sort of solve these. I really enjoy trying to complete something before moving on to the next sort of variant. But I think this is probably good enough for us to start thinking about numbers. So what comes to me next is these. If you think about all the black Kropke dots, they can only be one, sorry, all the odd black Kropke dots. And I think I've selected all of them now. They can only be from one and three. So the possibilities are one, two, two, four, and four, eight. And of course, the last one is three, six. The only pairs that have odds are, of course, the one, two, or the three, six. And then their counterpart, their partner, clearly has to be from two, six, since these are the only available ones. And then if you need even only black crop kiddos, they are either two, four, or four, eight, but they definitely have a four. So I am also tempted to pencil mark these and have a think about what all of this now means. Two, four, eight with a definite four. And I'm just going to remove that reference so I don't confuse anybody. Can I do anything with this? Kind of. That two, six, for example, where is it in box four? It can only be in here. That gives me a 2-6 pair, therefore these have to be 4 and 8. That can't be a 4 because we know that the 4 is on this even black Kropke dot pair. So that's the 8, that's the 4. These are not 4s, sorry, these are not 8s, that's a 2-4. The 2-4 are now saying both of these have to be 6s because neither of them can be 2. That 6 gives me a 2, gives me a 6, gives me a 3, gives me a 1. That 3 bounces back, no, it doesn't do anything. Ignore that. 
Um, we know that there is an eight in here. There'll be an eight in there. That's about it, really. That six gives me a three in here. Doesn't help me resolve these, actually. What else? It's just not quite enough. So this is... No. This is not the six. This is the six. This is two, four, or eight. This is not the six. This is the six. That gives me a two here. That's another six. That's a two. That's a one. Kind of a shame because that helps me with this one there. That's not a three. There has to be a three up there. It's not on this cell because of this. That's a three. This two here is doing plenty of work. Sorry, I'm a little bit clumsy right now with the selection. Just like I said, I really should have restarted the browser. Um, I think I resolved all of the odds, didn't I? No, this one is a one. Well, that was exactly helpful. I think, yes, I have resolved all the odd black crop kiddos. Okay, so what is this cell? And how do I make progress from here? That two, that's not a two, that's a four eight pair. One of these is a two, it's not exactly helpful or informative. One of these is a two, again, not great information. This is two or four, so we've got eight, six. That's a four, that's a two, that's a four. This is six, eight. There's two, six, eight in here. And then there is a four, six, eight in there with a definite four. Tricky. So this is a one-star difficulty rated puzzle, but it's certainly making you think, isn't it? I don't know if it's think as much as just the Sudoku is not exactly obvious. That one here means there are no ones there. That's a one. Can't have a three in here. That's the three. These now are all five, seven, nines. I think the five, seven, nines, given they don't lie on black crop kiddos, are going to be very tricky to resolve. Chances are I will need, there's a one in here, there's a three in there. Yeah, not all dots are given. So chances are I will actually really need, I might even need letters at some point. One of these is a three. These are from five, seven, nine, which means there's another five, seven, nine in here with a one. And this is one five seven nine, second five seven nine, third five seven nine. I think it's this black crop kid that holds the key. I just I how does it? So we know that this cell is from two or eight. It's not four and it's not six. If that's a two, this can be one or four. And if that's an eight, that can be a four. So that seems to sort of hold the secret for a lot of progress. can see that the two needs to be in here. Just kind of twos. The six needs to be one of these two cells. I can actually place the six, just Sudoku removing every possibility. And this can't be a six because that's not odd. That gives me, no, it doesn't give me a six up there. The four is now restricted to one of two cells in this box. I'm sort of pencil marking a ton, but it's not, I'm not sure it's exactly helping, if I'm honest. This is two, four, well, it's two or eight. Let's just see where that takes us. 
So these two cells are the same. Which makes it the same up here, which makes it the same down here, which makes it one of these two is just and then up there. Yeah, it's not really enough. It also makes it on here. Is that maybe the way to make progress? So essentially the composition of this black Kropke pair is different from the composition of this black Kropke pair. So this 2,8 is not in here and its opposite is inside that black Kropke dot. But this 2,8 is on this black Kropke dot and therefore the composition of this is slightly different. So I'm actually kind of wondering if I should start using, I mean, more colors to try and make head or tails of it or count five odds means all of these are even this can only be four or eight this can only be two or eight i'm not sure i can say that there is a definite eight amongst them this is two four or eight unfortunately there is three evens. There's a fourth one which could be here or one of these two. How do I figure this one out? Really comes down to whatever this is. Sort of. Because if it's a two, it's ambiguous, unfortunately, because it can either be one or four. There's a one. There you go. There's a one in here, just classic Sudoku, no ones there. There's five odds. It has to be a one. It's actually on the Nabner, because this cell doesn't allow me to put it in here, which means this is four, this is eight. That gives me an eight, that gives me a two, that gives me a four. That doesn't actually help me with my two eight, but never matter, because it allows me to completely color the grid. And the hope is with a fully colored grid, I'll be able to pick up pace a bit. How are we doing? 14 minutes. I need, well, that is odd because I've already placed the four evens in column six. That is even. And surely I can finish it from here. This is not four or eight. This is a six. This is a two. That's an eight. That's a four. That's a two. That's an eight. We already know it wasn't an eight. That's two, four pair. We said that these are opposite, so this is a 4-8 pair. And therefore this is a 2, that's a 4, that's a 2. Are the 4-8s are? I must have made a mistake. Oh no, of course, I've, I've sort of ignored the Nabner lines. Yeah, I have ignored the Nabner lines because the mixed Nabner lines tell me a lot. I really have ignored it. This is not 5, this is not 7, this is a 9. 5 and 7 are adjacent to the 6. These are not 9, that's a 5-7 pair. That's a 9. Right, finally waking up. <laughs> Took me a while. This is 5-7 or 9, except that's not a 9. There is one 5 or 7 in here, and it can't be a 5 because of this 4. So no 5, that's a 5. That's not a five, that's seven or nine. That's seven or nine again. One seven, we probably could figure out what this is. So my two options are three and nine, and it can't be a three next to the four on the Nabler. That's nine, that's three, that's not a nine. Sort of, okay. Where, what other mixed Nabner lines do we have? This one here can't be a three, surely, uh, because it would have been, oh, hang on, no. There is a break between these black Kropke dots, so I have to be a bit more careful there. Let's just finish the evens. That's eight, that's six. And let's really pay attention to what's going on here. So these are one and five, seven. The one can't be next to the two. That's not the one, that's the one. This is another five or seven, which is interesting because it would really tell us which one of these is the four eight. Now, if it's eight, 
that would be five, three still works. Obviously, if it's four, the three doesn't. Same goes the other way around. Right, uh, let's move on, shall we? This is five or seven, presumably. Can't be a nine. Therefore, there has to be an. Oh, no, hang on. Nine is done. So this is three, five, seven. With a definite nine in here. This is one, five, seven. I'm just going around pencil marking for the moment just to sort of see what am I missing, such as neither of these could be a one. That's a one. That's not a one. That's a five, seven pair. That means that the one is in here with a three, nine pair. And this is five, seven. This is it's not three, which means that's the three. This is five, seven, or nine, and at the moment it can be any of them. Nothing in the column, really. I need a three between these cells. The three is not here. The three is in there. I need a one. That's the one. That's the three. This is again five, seven, nine. It's not one or three. That's a triple five, seven, nine. That's a one. That's a seven. That's a five. That's a seven, nine pair. One of these is a five. That's already the case. There's a three in here. More five, seven, nines, of course. Right, it is very much down to what is going on with these Nabna lines. And I think the best way to solve this is I'm just going to write down all the possibilities for a second. There's a definite 9, and then there is a second 5, 7. So the 9 we know cannot be next to... I'm sort of thinking about the 5, 7... You see, depending on the 4, 8, the 5, 7 can also not be next to one of them. Hopefully that sort of made sense. So if this is a 4, it can't be next to a 3 or a 5. If that's an 8, it can't be next to a 7 or a 9. So I'm just trying to see if that actually helps me figure out, does that force a digit into the middle like a 5, 7? I don't think it does. I really don't think it does. Have I missed anything else? That can't be a 7 next to an 8. Yeah, so of course I did. No 5s. That's a 5. Another 7, 9 pair. Let me just... I think challenges the colours. I, I really didn't pick the right colour with orange. Let me just... I'm going to go with grey so that the... I don't even need the colour anymore. What I'm looking for is where do the Nabner lines cross colors because this is where it's most useful right now. And we've got everything we can out of this one. I think we've got everything we can out of that one as well. We have from this one. And the only remaining two that are multiparity are the one in the top right. I'm just going to double check I haven't missed anything else in terms of classic Sudoku. Five seven five seven three nine three nine, and they are just all odd. That's fine. One of these being a five, not exactly enlightening, except seven nine pair. That's a five. That's not a five. There's a definite five in here. How's that helping me? Not sure it is, if I'm honest. In here, this is three with a seven nine. Right, let's, let's do this the hard way. So this cannot be a 3 next to a 2. This cannot be 5 or 7 next to a 6. So this is 3 or 9. I'm, I'm just going to delete all the corner pencil marks for the moment. This gives me a 3, 9 pair, which means that is another 5, 7. Just doesn't feel like there is enough, if I'm honest, but... I mean, I'm sure it solves. 
I just need to pay a bit more attention, maybe stare at the screen a bit harder than I am. Come on, sleuth. What are you missing? Five, seven, three, nine. I think any of these would work. There you go. That can't be an eight. Because I removed the three, it means I have to pick two digits between five, seven, and nine. The critical part there is they can't both of them be five. And therefore, if I pick an eight in here, how am I going to pick between seven and nine and not break this Nabner line? So that has to be a four. That has to be an eight. The eight removes the nine. That's a three. That's not a three. That's a nine. That's a three. Um, now that's a four. That can't be. Yeah, that gives me seven in here, nine in here, five there. Therefore, this is the five. That's the seven. That's the five. This is eight. This is four. Um, that looks like, well, it's not three or nine. That's a seven. That's the three. That's the nine. That's the seven. And that will just unwind the rest. Nine, seven, five, seven, nine, seven. And if I've not made any mistakes, that's the nine for the finish. That's a phenomenal puzzle, Jobo. So, I mean, I, I like it for so many reasons. So, Admittedly, there was a lot of Sudoku blindness for me. That there's no doubt about that. So I made it probably seem a little bit harder than it really is. But I think that finish at the end with the Nabners was just stunning. And it kind of kept a constant difficulty throughout the entire solve. So I really, really enjoyed that. Hope that you guys enjoyed the puzzle as well and the video. And I'll see you back for the next one. Bye-bye for now.